the Counterattack playthrough series. We are playing Barbarossa, Kiev Rostov, 1941, and we're continuing scenario number four, Battle of Sumi. This is turn three, or campaign turn 52. It's October 2nd and 3rd. It's the Germans' turn. Um, we'll go ahead and start the strategic segment with the weather determination phase, which is dry per scenario rules. Supply determination phase, no supply rules for this scenario. Replacements, no replacements rule. Uh, replacement rules are not being used in this scenario. Reinforcements, uh, the Germans do get a reinforcement. Uh, another Henkel. Go ahead and put that in their ready box. And then uh, we can go into the air readiness phase. So there's the uh, Henkel in the ready box. We have a dummy air unit that's flown, so that could automatically uh, be promoted to you ready. Then in the damage box, we've got uh, a Henkel and a BF-109. So um, let's go ahead and roll to see if we can move them, up, if they can be repaired. Okay, I got a 10 um, for this guy, so it remains here. Now for the BF-109. <laughs> I got another 10. Wow, that's awful. Um, okay, let's come over to the messy Russians over here. Let's go ahead and do the flown box first. Start with the uh, this SB here. Got a nine, remains here. And really rolling high right now. MiG-3, got a five. Um, looking at modifiers here, yep. Moves up to the ready box. For the I-16. Got an eight. Uh, yeah, that moves up to the ready box, uh, just barely. Then the damaged um, SB. Got a one, moves up to the flown box. Okay, it's time for the Axis air interdiction uh, phase. They have a Heinkel bomber and a dummy air unit. Go ahead and randomly select where these guys are gonna go. Oop, that's not very random, is it? Here we go. All right, put this guy here, this guy here. Um, the Russians have two fighters in their ready box, so they might as well use them. And uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter because I don't know what's there. So it's kind of risky for the Germans, but I guess it, you know, might as well use the air units. So let's go ahead and do this one first. Dummy air unit, okay. Russian goes back to their phone box. Dummy air unit, the German phone box. That means the best Russian fighter is going up against the Henkel. I'm gonna roll for air initiative. That's a nine Soviet initiative. I believe all that means is uh, if there are multiple air units in this engagement, the Soviets would get to pick the engagements, like which units go for which other units. Um, since it's just one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, roll for the attacker. Since the bomber is um, a mission unit, it's performing the interdiction mission, the fighter basically gets a free shot. Its um, combat rating is two. You subtract it from the enemy combat rating, so that's zero. Um, so, Rolling, rolled an eight on the zero column of the air combat table. That is no effect. Okay, so the mission can continue. The MiG-3 uh, goes to the flown box. And uh, I figured where I got this guy from, I guess right here. So now it has to uh, go through anti-aircraft fire. Headquarters gets a plus one. Rolled a five, plus one is six, no effect. Let me see if there's any other modifiers. Nope. So we'll go ahead and fly the bomber back. And there's now an interdiction level one there. Headquarters pretty much canceled out. All right, that's the end of the strategic segment and we'll be starting the Axis player segment. Okay, and we start with the Axis movement phase. Let's see what we wanna do here. Um, this area is kinda of bogged down like this this guy can't really destroy guys without potentially taking losses, but we'll see. Um, but I do um, think these two guys can try to do some harm. 
Maybe the stack can cruise up here and attack this. Might be a bad attack, but this guy's got um, only one defense, so maybe. Maybe this guy can attack this um, cavalry unit and then swing around towards the enemy headquarters. Um, or go take uh, Viri. Um, I'm kind of looking for overrun potential here, but um, if, you're all, if all your units are German, you need a 5 to 1 odds. And I don't really see that anywhere, um, except for maybe up here. Um, but if you're attacking, overrunning into a city, major city, or fortification, um, the odds have to be 12 to 1. So I don't really see that situation happening. So maybe we'll go ahead and go for an attack on Sumi. So these guys are going to um, leave the bed in. I don't actually see any markers that I can use to remember who owns these hexes. I think, I kind of feel like they should be provided in a game like this, but I don't see any. Um, so we'll go ahead and move these guys. They can go seven, um, half, one, um, then going into terrain, it's going to cost one, so two, three, four, five, oops, um, four and a half, then five and a half, you know, instead of going like that, four and a half, then crossing this river would be five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, entering enemy zone of control, oh, yellow band, no zone of control, so we have enough movement to get in there, get across the river. Okay, and I think 16th motorized, they're just gonna, hmm, yeah, I think they will just move up here. Okay, down here, so assuming this guy might want to pull back on their turn. Um, not sure what this guy should do. He can just come up here and block, or he could just stay here. If this guy pulls back, he can follow him. He can stay near um, Lipovaya Dolina. All right, so the big question here is what to do with 9th Panzer? And uh, I think we also had, he had 10th motorized in there. So maybe we'll Try not to make this giant mess here. I um, feel like I should be using them for something, but the Soviet forces here in the center are so strong. Um, they could do an infiltration move um, to like cross the river or move over here. It's not very useful. Maybe they, they could go over here and try to pick off this um, cavalry unit. Um, it does have artillery support though. Um, you know, maybe, hmm, maybe they'll just stay in this central position here. You know what? They're going to go, hmm, I could attack here too, across this river though. Six defense, yeah, that's, even with artillery support, that's tough. Maybe I'm not being tough enough, that's six. Just trying to see someone I can try to pick off. Yeah, these zones of control make it tough. So I think for now they're just gonna it's pretty weak. They're just gonna move as a division over to here. Okay. I think that's it for the moves. So we'll go ahead and do the uh Axis um, attack declaration phase. We've got two attacks coming in. Do um, Sumi and this cavalry unit here. Um, we have no aircraft in the ready box. Soviets have no aircraft in the ready box. Um, let's see, my designated artillery, no artillery available. Um, Soviet reaction phase, reaction. Well, they can't react because their headquarters has been suppressed. So um, we'll go ahead and enter the Axis combat phase. 
So how about we'll do this one first. So this is six. Um, we're attacking from uh, hills. By the way, since the headquarters is suppressed, it can't order this guy to do a no retreat or an additional retreat. So um, that's why I'm just kind of glossing over that. So six, they're attacking from a hill. I better go see what that means. Um, probably nothing. Yep, nothing. Uh, into clear. So six to two. So that's three to one. Uh, I did three to one odds in the first turn of this scenario and took some losses. So this is probably not a good thing. So three to one. Um, is there combined arms? I don't think so. Nope. Got a six on three to one. Huh. Uh, defender retreat. Nothing to the attacker. So where do these guys want to go? Yeah, it's too bad. I was hoping, well, let's see. Yeah. Uh, by retreating there, that's going to make it hard for these guys to, in their motorized movement phase, get up to Viri. Okay, so I guess they'll advance. Remember this scenario, there are no supply rules, so these guys are free to just run amok. Okay, over here in Sumi, we have an anti aircraft unit. Um, let's see, this is attacking from clear into a city. A uh, city gets a plus one die roll modifier to the defender. Uh, if there was an um, attacking armor, it would be halved. And if it was, um, there was a, if I was attempting to get a combined arms bonus, I could not, but I can't anyway. So we got four to one um, with no modifiers. No, four to one plus one. So slight advantage to the defender. Got a four, four to one. Um, that'd be pretty bad, but then I get the plus one to five, so defender takes one step loss. Destroyed. Advance after combat. Germans have taken two more points. So right now they have four victory points, I think. Let's see. No, no, they have five. Um, they have Sumi, one, two. The bed in, I'm assuming that's going to fall. Three. Four. Five. Um, one question is, is there some kind of instant victory for that kind of situation, or do I just have to wait till the end of the game? Let me find out. Yeah, so uh, it's only considered for the scenario at the end of the scenario. So they have to hold it, and they probably won't. Okay, so um, that ends the combat phase. Now for Axis Motorized Movement. Um, I feel like they're not really able to do a lot here. Um, they have five, so they're winning right now. So maybe they should try to hold what they can. Hmm, do I break these guys up and have one come down to Lebedin? And then another sort of be in a blocking position? These guys up here in Sumi are pretty weak. Um, they'll get a plus one for the city, so they might as well just camp there. Um, so the question is, what do these guys do? I could split them up. I could go actually try to threaten Viried. Maybe that's a good thing to do. They're going to be able to move at half their movement. So um, if I were to do that, that would be let's see, that would be like uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Three and a half. Eh, that might be worth doing. Um, yeah, you know what? We'll do that with one of these guys. So one, two, three, three and a half. Um, if I just leave him like this, um, sorry, I should show you where that guy went. So it's threatening Viri from this direction. If I leave this guy here, he's in a good blocking position to protect Sumi, but I can I think these guys could crush him. So maybe it should come down more towards Lebedin. I was thinking it could cruise down this road, but these roads are not very fast when you're in terrain. So this would be one, two, 
three, three and a half. Hmm, that's pretty good. Get him back across the river. Um, this guy here could still go take Lebedin though. Hmm. Yeah, on second thought, we'll just leave him here. Here. <laughs> Where do I want to go? I guess we'll go here. Hmm. Am I asking him to be destroyed? Yes, I think I am. Okay. Enough of this hemming and hawing. He's going to go with his buddy. Okay. Down here, what do we want? Well, we can um, move these guys over here to try to limit the mobility of these guys. Let's see, but if they move here, they'll be more than three spaces away from this guy, so they won't be able to react over there if, if there's an attack in that direction. If they go here, they're still in range. Um, they block this way, but these guys can still cruise down here. Yeah, so Lebedin is going to fall. So my biggest hope is to capture Viri. Um, if these guys move out, there's another one there too. Um, of course, these units could cruise down to Lebedin too. Let's see here. One, two, three, three and a half. Oh, no, it stopped there. Yeah, and then this, there's two points over here that, so they'll just, they'll just, um, they'll just hang here. Okay, this guy down here. He'll stay. It's my fastest, my fastest guy too. Oh well. Okay, so that was the Axis Motorized Movement phase, then the Axis Engineering phase, uh, basically skipped in this turn. So we're going to move to the Soviet Player segment. Okay, first we start with the Soviet Motorized Movement phase. Um, so Motorized Movement units move full movement capacity, cavalry at half. And then if the headquarters were not suppressed, um, it could order a couple extra units, but uh, not this time. So, just kind of looking at the numbers and the way the Germans are stacked on each other, I don't see a good safe attack for the Soviets, even though they have all these nice mobile units here. But just having them there, I feel, is like just a decent threat. Um, I think one thing we'll do over here is uh, we don't need two units here. So, what can this guy do? He can go one, two, I think that's what it costs. Let's see, moving into woods in dry conditions, motorized. So yeah, two. Um, then three to cross the river, four into clear. And then it'd be nice if we can go here, here or something, but it can't. Uh, because it needs an extra movement point for the zone of control. So it has a movement point left though, so maybe... Yeah, maybe it will move into this stack here. Hmm. And uh, this guy has half his moves available. So I want to try to protect Lebedin down there. So maybe he'll go one, two, and uh, just hang out there. Um, this guy can't move because he's infantry. We'll move him soon enough though. Um, get some serious situation back here. Don't want Viri to fall. So maybe this unit from Stepovaka will go one, two, three. The uh, cavalry will join it. Hmm. Maybe the cavalry will stay there. This guy will go one, two, three as well. Um, these guys will pull out of here, going to Stepovka. 
guy staying there. Um, maybe the headquarters pulls back. It's out of the introduction area. So I suppose that means it could order a unit to move. Um, I'd have, I'll have to see when the movement phase comes. We'll find out. Might only be appropriate now. Um, so this cavalry unit is free to move. You know, maybe that's not a good move. I just did. I don't want this guy going closer to German units. So instead, maybe it'll go one, two, three. Let's see, is it still in range of things? No, he'll come in here. Um, we got zones in control here to prevent these guys from breaking through. This guy's range covers everyone here. Um, there's the zone of controls I was talking about, preventing guys from cruising through here. Okay, we've got a nice little... Oh, what am I doing? Headquarters cannot move right now, it's not motorized. We'll do that later. Okay, let me make sure I didn't cheat anywhere else. Alright, so this cavalry unit... Well, what I don't want is German units coming down from Sumi and from the other side and just Wailing on Stepovka. Move this guy go one. Um, let's see. Hills is two, so two, three. So he's just in a blocking position. Okay. Guess we'll leave this artillery here to support either direction where the if, when the attack comes. And I can't move it this phase anyway. <laughs> Okay, um, that is the end of the Soviet motorized movement phase. Attack declarations. There is one situation where I could declare an attack, but I'm going to decline to do that. Um, so now the German reaction. Well, there are no uh, declared attacks, so there is no German reaction. So then we go into the Soviet um, normal movement phase. Um, so now we could get rid of this, move this headquarters out, so move it up to here or so. Nope, one more back. Um, yeah, this guy's going to fall back on Lebedin. One, two, two and a half, three. Okay, so that drops the German victory points back to four, so they're no longer winning. Um, feels very tenuous. And I don't think there's going to be any other moves. Okay, then we go into the Soviet engineering phase, which is skipped for this scenario, because none of the items you can do um, are appropriate. And so the surrender phase is skipped as well. And so we enter the game turn interphase. We'll go ahead and get rid of this interdiction marker. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure that's the time to get rid of it. So um, I'll have to look that up. Um, and then uh, we move to the next turn. I had forgot to have this on the Soviet side here when the Soviets are going, so now we flip it to German side. Gonna be the next turn, and we'll see what happens on the final turn in the next installment. Catch you later.